Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Lawrence of Brindisi, who was a Franciscan follower of Jesus and of St. Francis of Assisi. And today we hear Jesus and also the um, uh, first reading speaking of the bread from heaven, the bread of life. Let's begin this Mass by asking forgiveness for all of our sins so that we can worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, you are sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who for the glory of your name and the salvation of souls bestowed on the priest, St. Lawrence of Brindisi, a spirit of counsel and fortitude. Grant, we pray, that in the same spirit we may know what must be done, and through his intercession bring it to completion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The children of Israel set out for Elam and came into the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departure from the land of Egypt. Here in the desert, the whole assembly of the children of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The children of Israel <clears throat> said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread? But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain now, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, however, when they prepare that they bring in, let it be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Then Moses said to Aaron, Tell the whole congregation of the children of Israel, present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. When Aaron announced this to the whole assembly of the children of Israel, they turned toward the desert and said, Lo, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the grumbling of the children of Israel. Tell them, in the evening, twilight, you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I am the Lord. I am your God. 
In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the children of Israel asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord gave them bread from heaven. They tempted God in their hearts by demanding the food they craved. Yes, they spoke against God, saying, Can God spread a table in the desert? Yet he commanded the skies above, and the doors of heaven he opened. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance. He stirred up the east wind in the heavens, and by his power brought on the south wind. The Lord gave up them in heaven. And he rained meat upon them like dust, and like the sand of the sea, winged fowl, which fell in the midst of their camp, round about their tents. the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. My sisters and brothers, this is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. I love that first reading because the people are just like us. God has just done a stupendous intervention in their lives. Exodus was the defining moment for the Jewish experience. This is what started them on the path to become the chosen people. They're not called the chosen people yet. But God has broken into their lives, has done this great sign and wonder called Exodus, parting the sea, etc., having them cross over dry land to the other side, destroying the Egyptian army, etc. And then you turn the page, and they're suddenly in the desert. 
and they don't like it. The desert is hot, it's dry, if there's any water, it's bad, there's no food, and what do they do? They start grumbling against Moses. They've already forgotten what God just did the page before. Why did you lead us into this desert? It's your fault. That would fit in very well with our political discourse today. It's your fault that all these bad things are happening, and so on and so forth. Why did you do this to us? And they start looking back to what it was like in Egypt. Even though they were slaves, at least we had a roof over our head, at least we had food, we had water, we had everything we needed. <clears throat> it wasn't too pleasant being a slave, but we had all that we needed. And they want to go back to the way it was. That experience will give rise to a tradition in the spirituality of the church that persists right down to this day. And interestingly enough, it has been confirmed by modern psychology. There are three stages to the spiritual life. The first stage is the encounter. That's the honeymoon stage. Whether your experience of that stage or my experience was a powerful mountaintop experience, I like to call it, lots of bells and whistles, lots of good feelings, it feels good, it's fun, it's like falling in love with the Lord. You'll do anything that God tells you to do, I'll do anything that God tells me to do. But then the day comes when we find ourselves in the desert, that's the second stage. And we start looking back to the way it was. If we could just go back to the way it was, everything would be fine. But the principle says, unless we plow our way through the desert, we will never make it to the third stage. The third stage is the glory of the empty tomb at the resurrection of Jesus. First stage, second stage, third stage. We don't need to be afraid of the desert. Now, I, I understand the desert for us uh, isn't act exactly like being in the Mojave Desert right now, but it's a time when their good feelings are gone, when things are a little tough, when the devil is throwing roadblocks in front of us. It's a struggle. Sometimes it can be hard. Sometimes we have to make ourselves come. We don't want to come. It doesn't feel good anymore, etc. I know people, for example, who walked away from our prayer group because they were in the first stage when they experienced what we call baptism in the Holy Spirit. And they loved it. And they had great testimonies. But then they hit a dry spot. The good feelings were gone. It's almost as if they said to God, well, I'll show you, God, take away the good feelings. I'm not going to go anymore. So there. And they walk away from it. Wanting to go back to the way it was. And they tell us, the experts on this subject tell us, if we don't persist, persevere through the desert experience, we'll never make it to the third stage. And we will condemn ourselves to a lifetime of spiritual immaturity. Good feelings are the least reliable indicator of God working in our lives. If it feels good, it's usually an indication we should start doing some discernment. Because good feelings can be deceptive. Oh, I'm so glad, Lord, that you're doing in my life what I really wanted you to do in the first place. So we're really copacetic here. Projecting onto God what we want God to do in the first place. That's very different from saying, Lord, here I am. Take me as I am. I have a good friend of mine, <clears throat> excuse me, a woman known throughout the world uh, as an evangelist, <clears throat> excuse me, who was speaking at the same conference I was speaking at, and I attended one of her general sessions, 
And there was this moment in the session when she said to us, uh, hundreds of people are around me, I'm out in the, the congregation. She said, isn't it wonderful that God loves us as we are? And as soon as she said that, all of us jumped to our feet, hooping and hollering and applauding and thanking God and praising God. And she just stood there at the microphone, didn't say a word, and just smiled as we hooped and hollered. And then when we calmed down and returned to our seats, she said, and is it, isn't it wonderful that he loves us too much to leave us as we are? Think about that. The desert experience is where they experienced God. It's where they started the process of becoming the chosen people, where God started to lay out the rules and regulations of how they were to live as his chosen people. And they grumbled and they complained and they dragged their feet, but God never gave up on them. Moses never gave up on, well, he did couple of occasions but he did the one thing that we're all called to do when we're facing difficult things he interceded before God on behalf of the people and God sure enough led them through the desert kicking and screaming until that moment came when he could form them finally as the chosen people his chosen people so if we're in a desert situation no matter what our experience of God has been in the encounter, whether it was a powerful mountaintop experience or a gentle, quiet experience, they're both valid. Whatever that experience has been, if we find ourselves in a desert situation, get ready to start producing fruit because that's where God is going to work with us and work on us to bring us through. There is a popularized notion today uh, popularized by some evangelical circles called the rapture. And the theory of the rapture, which was never part of the teaching of Christianity until the 19th century, maybe a little bit of the 18th century, the argument of the rapture is, well, God at the end uh, is going to, end times, is going to yank out all the true believers so they don't have to experience the horrors of the end of the world and all that kind of thing. He's going to take them home to heaven and, and so on and so forth. The answer of the church to that is, no, that's, that's not the teaching of scripture. That's not the teaching of the church. If we find ourselves in hard times. We're not going to be yanked out of them by God. We're going to be given the grace to persevere through them putting our trust in God, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, and he will bring us through. In the gospel today, Jesus gives one of those amazing parables. Uh, it's, it's amazing because the disciples who hear it should have understood immediately what he was saying, and they don't get it. Okay? The sower going out. Uh, this is an agricultural society 2,000 years ago. They don't have tractors. They don't plant the seeds deep in the ground. The sower goes out with a bag of seeds and he just casts it out on the ground, hoping that some of it is gonna sink its roots uh, and, and produce fruit. The interesting thing is, what Jesus describes in this parable is a description of the spiritual life. Some seed falls on the surface but doesn't have any roots. There are people who are well, how can I say it, in their life of faith are on the surface, but they have no roots. Some fell on rocky soil as the problems of life that interfere with our following Jesus. Some fell on you know, bad soil, it didn't seek its roots and it just withered when it started to grow. And only some of it fell on good soil and it produced the fruit desired. Are you and I that good soil? As Jesus cast on us the seeds of his love, his peace, his presence, and are we producing the fruit that he really desires to see in every one of our lives? So we might want to sit with both of those readings 
sometime today and ask ourselves, am I just like those people that Moses had to deal with? I've already forgotten what God has done in my life. I don't like where I am now. I don't like this desert moment. Or are we where Jesus was pointing us to in that parable of the sower? So Lord, we ask today in the name of Jesus that you help us through your spirit to be all that you've called us to be. And I think God has much more in mind for us than most of us are accustomed of expecting. Maybe a classic example is our saint of today, Lawrence of Brindisi, a 17th century Capuchin monk who was a great preacher great teacher. The Ordo says he was a controversialist. I, I don't know what a controversialist is unless it's somebody who likes to argue. <laughs> but he was also a military chaplain. He was also a diplomat. He was also a government official. And he wrote, we still have them, 15 volumes of spiritual items. <laughs> And he's our saint of this day, somebody who started very humbly, but rose through the ranks, so to speak, to become a powerful figure in his day. Think of what God can do with you and me if we simply say yes to his invitation, whatever it is. He'll work out the details. He'll open the doors. He'll send us to where he wants us to go. And he will always expect us to bear fruit that will endure. God bless you. Let us stand and pray for the church, especially for the Franciscan order, that like St. Lawrence of Brindisi, they will um, give an example of following the Lord and living a life of poverty. We pray to the Lord. Pray for each one of us when we are in times of desert and dryness that we will uh, keep our eyes fixed on our Lord and our Lady. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray in this Mass, especially for um, the special intention for Ileana Rodriguez on the occasion of her birthday. We pray to the Lord. Father, hear these prayers offered at the altar of Christ our Lord, who lives forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of blessed Lawrence of Brindisi be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift them up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. <clears throat> It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Lawrence of Brindisi, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. 
Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so in the company of the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Mm. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, performed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of power and the Lord and Lord Jesus, mine forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
communion antiphon. He who ponders the law of the Lord day and night will yield his fruit in due season. Let us pray. <clears throat> Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of St. Lawrence of Brindisi, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration is ended, so let us go forth now with love and joy to serve the Lord, one another, and all of those to whom he sends us today. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Lord.